We are doing everything in phases over here, so I wanna really bring you in. I'm about to paint the exterior, which the episode is already live, so I'll link that for you. But before I do that, it's kind of backwards to take this lattice out after painting a fresh coat of paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before in anticipation to this makeover that you are seeing now. So let's take out all this lattice because it just really blocks the view, you know what I mean? And I'll probably get rid of this staircase and make a ladder situation so when you look directly out, it's not blocked. But okay, let's do it. I demoed the lattice for three main reasons. Number one, I can replace it with something that I like style-wise a little bit better. Number two, it was really making the room feel small for being outdoors. And number three, it was blocking the view of the mountains that are my particular favorite. And this is why I wanted to do this before we paint this beauty. But also, the reason I wanted to take this lattice out is to show you when I replace it with just like a shade screen, how much better of a view is that? Oh, and yeah, that's a view of my archery range right there. I just need to fix it up. And that's so cool. <laughs> By removing that lattice, it automatically brought some more light into here, which you can totally see from the before. And now another way to lighten it up, which is a little bit ironic since it is outside, is to swap the paint color, which you guys learned in last week's episode. I trimmed it in that atrium white, which I used on the exterior, but for the larger portion of the walls, I just used a shade down, essentially from what I used on the exterior main walls. What's going on? The reason I decided to use a different color for this wall portion in the shade room is because I didn't want to make it look like I didn't put thought into it and just by switching the color of a room makes it look way more intentional. What you saw me measuring for was the pieces of palette I needed to cut down to replace the bareness of the trim of the shade room and that's just a fancy way of saying there were some holes on the floor that I wanted to fill up and not paint and have it have a little bit of texture, have it look a little bit more chic and that's where this palette wood came in handy. To secure it to the floor, I used some exterior construction adhesive and then these finishing screws that are my new favorite. They kind of just hide perfectly within the wood. And then I continued to do that around the entire thing before I painted the floor. Now, the floor paint that I am using is not floor paint. And that is because I genuinely don't mind that. I do not mind it out here at all because it was already painted with red paint that wasn't floor paint at all as well and it weathered fine and it looked great and I'm actually gonna be covering this area with rugs. And if it really bothers me that much, but I can just go ahead, grab white garage floor paint and throw it down on the floor and make it quote unquote like a, a weatherproof or out exterior garage friendly, if you will. But I wasn't too concerned with that. I did prime the floor with like a stain blocking primer to see if that would work temporarily, but it definitely didn't. I will need to come back in and make it for exterior, but like I said right before, I'm not really too concerned with it because it makes a huge difference right now. The weather's not wet over here currently in the desert, and I did order a couple of rugs that will be covering this and are made for exterior, so that's exciting. I'm excited to be partnering up with Raycon Monthly for different episodes and really pumped that The Shade Room is the first one with them. There really is nothing I love more than popping in my Raycon everyday earbuds and tuning out the world and tuning into what I'm doing. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. They're doing things differently than other brands out there. From the way that they design their product to the way that they price them, Raycon prioritizes their customer experience from start to finish. Raycon also offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems, which Y'all know the pain of getting those things caught on a door handle. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson are obsessed with them. Raycon has a 45 day free return policy. And if you guys are interested in snagging a pair of your own, you can click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash Mets to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Hi, hell, hello. I know this is an unexpected pop in. I'm just not having a good day. Things aren't really going my way, but they're turning out great as they are coming. 
I wanted to be real real quick but I do stuff like this I build out really pretty pieces of furniture and I and I take my time with details and I split rooms up into different phases when I'm not feeling good fun fact why I really sat you guys down here was to tell you that this thing I'm about to put in here actually uh, ran the entire electrical for the jacuzzi so it has switches on the sides I'm gonna use that as a base to a longer bench that will also double as something you can lay down on and lounge in and I will keep the switches on the side so when I get the electrical redone anything that has to do with the shade room can simply be controlled by these three switches okay Rachel better mood in three two one ready and let's get our therapy on with building I get asked a decent amount of times what's my process and if I'm going to be honest for this property there really hasn't been one. I just kind of have a design idea of what I want it to look like and uh, for the most part what we've done here it's kind of spoken to me as I've gone. So you see me measuring for a bench which was my original idea and I knew that I wanted this to be the focal point when you walked in because I believe that a shade room needs something for your eye to be drawn to other than the view so that was this bench also i'm tailoring it to the lengths of me laying fully out on this or being able to host a couple of people sitting down comfortably when i originally bought this house or when i was in the running to buy it i wrote a letter to the owners letting them know that I wouldn't be coming in here and demoing what has been built by their father and the history that has been spent here. I will only be upgrading it to create a new history of my own because I just fell in love with the property as is. So you'll see that I'm using those two by fours and I'm basically cutting them down to frame them out and expose themselves the same way that the original carpenter of the home who built all of this stuff did before me. Now you see, I'm gonna do something a little bit wacky. A little bit of a wackadoodle if you will I'm gonna move the remaining of the furniture in to ensure I cannot extend the depth of this bench so I'm gonna move everything and see where it feels good walk it a couple times and then execute the bench top it's a little bit backwards but it'll make us work the space smarter not harder like it's already done to my butt one man's trash is definitely another woman's treasure and that is in particular to basically all the decor you're going to see and including the coffee table that I found just walking my property. Don't even get me started with these two chairs. They were a housewarming gift by a very incredible neighbor and they're wood leather. I'm hoping one of a kind because they, they definitely look like they are. So unfortunately I can't link them because they just kind of showed up on my front doorstep. Like I mentioned before, I wanted this bench area to be the piece de resistance, if you will, of the shade room. And that meant incorporating, if you guys recognize this from my OG set when I first started YouTube, this was a piece from it. I just turned it horizontally and hung it in the middle. And we're going to work around it with reclaimed pallet wood to just really accent it and also tie it in together with the rusticness of the other wood. I cut the palette pieces down to size on my miter at a 45 degree angle where you see it meeting with a piece of set that I already installed. And then I also opted to hang those vertically just to make it look a little bit taller versus going the horizontal direction, which I think would make everything look a little bit wider. So I wanted to add some height and expand it a bit. I really just did this cut by cut, filling it in piece by piece, running back and forth and just seeing where I would see like the exposed white two by four that I painted. I wanted there to be a complete backing to this bench. And then as well as the bench top, that is from the structure that we knocked down in the last episode. I cut that down to size and sanded it down as well. So no splinters is a no go. At this point, I was kind of flipping out off screen because I really couldn't believe that I haven't really bought anything for this makeover and we've made such a huge difference so far. I added a plant just to see what it kind of looks like. I'm going to paint those tomorrow and do a final couple of things, but we built that lounge slash bench. How damn cute is that, guys? I also might frame it out. I'm not too sure. This is where things really got trippy for me. The decor that I've had on hand that you can see from my previous bedroom makeover, I will link it for you, the rusted vintage things, they all just started playing their part in this shade room. 
The rug that I ordered for the room is not going to be here for another four weeks, but I do have to say shout out to Ben Ueda for giving me this Moroccan rug straight that he got from Morocco that perfectly worked in this corner. I will be layering two rugs and this is one of them. I moved on to utilizing three pots that were already here on the property. I have a ton, you'll see it in HelloFresh vlog, but I use those to plant the new plants for you guys to start to get a taste of my landscaping vibe. I did go ahead and use decorative pebble and the reason being is not only so the soil will stay a little bit more moist here in the desert because of the sun is so crazy, but also I think it makes it look a little bit more fine-tuned and chic and speaking of way more chicness, I just had the inspiration after finding this thrifted mirror to hang it outdoors uh, because I mean why not? Look how absolutely stunning it is. The red of the rock of the exterior of the party pad is going to become less invasive the more terracotta and reds I pull through the decorations of the space. And that's what I feel that rust situation with all this decor that I keep using is doing for me. Okay, a little fun fact, what you see here. I bought myself a 1961 Jeep Willie. Yes, I did. And the couple was so rad that I bought it from there, showing me their property. And he said that, uh, because rust is like my favorite thing in the desert, he gifted me this little miniature door. So I wanted to hang it and implement it. I do need to like groove out this little area that's rusting, which I'll just do real quick with my multi-tool and, or like my router. Um, or actually I'm just gonna chisel it real quick so it does lock and fully be flush. I'm going to leave it blank so Miss Woodbrain, as a surprise to her, um, will be able to put a little quote in there. Because I think it'd be cool if you opened it and it and it said a quote. Okay, that's all. That's what this is. And it will close flush soon. No. Even though this shade room lays on the party pad itself, which I'm giving you a full in-depth tour as well this week of what is on it, I wanted this to be relaxing and cozy and mellow, which I definitely think I nailed. My heart is skipping a beat watching this back. It skips a beat every time I walk out and I enjoy the sunset in it, and it most definitely skipped a beat when I got to surprise my women this week, which I will show you their reaction on another episode. I am in such disbelief that it used to be red and yellow, like honestly, the outside, the inside, and now we've done two of the major things that we need to do out of the four to the structure, but I want to bring you in on a tour of the entire party pad because it's so much more than what you're thinking, which we will do that in the next episode. And then I'm going to be bringing you into my life a little bit. So we're not really going to be project based for a couple more episodes, and I hope that's okay. I'm just trying to inspire you guys and share every part of this chapter of figuring out who I am here in the desert. So I decided to show you all my progress, no matter what form it may take. All right, enough of me yapping. I'll see you guys soon. I love you very much.